All right, so welcome back. This is the second part of the first series of how to add an app sale to your Wix website without using an app. And the way we're going to do it, it's a little bit of it's going to be a little bit different than the first one, but it's not going to be as difficult. So once you can see both of these options, if you watch the first video, you'll see that there's a lot of ways on how you can recreate this and be as creative and come up with something even better, right? Uh, hopefully it helps your business. And then for the third video that I'm going to be uploading soon, uh, it's going to be just about the timer, which it puts a little bit more of like a pressure or not pressure, but it'll be more like um, kind of like a way of like telling the client like, hey, look, this offer will expire in 10 seconds. So either add it now to your car or it's going to disappear kind of thing. So hopefully that helps you uh, to increase the sales or for your clients. And again, those are just marketing tactics. It's nothing wrong with them. And as long as you use them good, then it's you know, going to be very good for your business. All right. So let's jump into this. As you can see here, um, we have this page already. And most of the times, right, if you watch my other videos, I talk about the developer mode, but I'm not going to assume that you already know this. Let's say you're someone new that just found out about my channel today. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. I try to post a lot of content all the time. So the developer mode is an option that helps you go into the advanced uh, platform of Wix, which is called Bello. Right. And in this part, we're going to add a little bit of code that code. You'll be able to access it from the link that I'm going to have in the comment or description. Sorry. And that way you can just copy and follow the video and it's going to be very easy. So if you have turned on the developer mode, you should be able to see this um, part right here and then the left panel right here. If you haven't, then it will be off. Just turn it on. And once you're there, uh, that's all you need to do. For this specific uh, product, we want to make sure we go to the preview mode. And the reason why you want to do this is so you can be able to access the checkout page, which you could do through the editor. But if you don't have a product, it's just going to show blank. So in order for us to show something there, we're just going to add a product here as an example. And then we're going to add it to the cart. And then right here, once we add this here, uh, we can go to view cart. And then that should be able to see this box right here. As you can see, it's still showing the last one that I had there, which we're going to delete right now, which is this one. This is from the first video, so I'm just going to delete that one. And then yours should just look blank. So let me publish that. OK, so you have access to this part right here, which is also the cart page. But again, if you don't have any product, this is just going to show blank. So to not have you confused and be like, hey, this doesn't look similar to what you have. That's why I go this step further to show you how you can make sure it displays something in there. So once you're here, you want to go to the left panel and go where it says box. And then we're going to add multi-state boxes. If you are uh, not in developer mode, this is not going to show up. So you again, just make sure that you have added it. We're going to add this. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you expand everything, right, to cover all the area that you need to hide. So that way it looks very good. It doesn't let the people uh, complete the purchase. Uh, unless they either accept or deny your offer. Uh, the multi-state boxes have uh, what's called states. So in this case, we're going to add a second state, and then you have these two. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way is you can design this first and then duplicate the state so that way it looks similar. So that's what we're going to do to save a little bit of time. So first thing we're going to go is add a text here. And then we're going to attach it. I'm going to make sure this is a little smaller. And then limited time 
only. And then we're gonna make sure it's here. Um, <clears throat> or you can also say something like limited time only uh, available today or uh, one time offer. Let's do one time offer. One time offer. And then right there. And then we're gonna add a second text and we're gonna make sure. What I just did is I just copy and paste. You can also duplicate or you can come back here and add it again. So whatever is easy for you. So here we're just gonna make a little smaller. Uh, actually, we're gonna do like 10 or 20, let's do 18. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do 18. So this is something I learned with ClickFunnels and they make this part smaller. It is already created because their system is already built into it. But they, I noticed what they do is to keep this or to close the offer, they have it in a smaller text. So that's the strategy. All right, so here we're gonna be like, uh, I don't want to save today and rather pay full price later. So the reason why they add this is so that way people can, you know, be on like, oh, this is gonna be higher in price later or what's going on, right? So that's a strategy that they use. But again, you can use it or change the text, whatever. This text is gonna be the button that we're gonna use to close the box. So it's just a text, but you can use a button or you can use an image. It doesn't matter because the ID is what we're gonna use. So again, feel free to change this part if you need to. Then we're gonna go to the store and then we're gonna add a single product. So we're gonna add a single product. Make sure the whole box lights up. As you can see, it says attached to state. You wanna make sure that happens because you don't wanna attach it to the strip and then your code is not gonna work. So make sure of that. Now you have this part, we're gonna click on settings and we're gonna go where it says uh, settings right here. And you want to select add product to cart. And the reason why you don't want to go to product URL page is because you want them to just add it to the pick to their already cart that they're about to check out. So that's why it's important to do this step. Then we're going to go here and we're going to find a product. So let's say we use this one. And that's remember state one. And we're going to rename it shortly, but now. I like my design, everything looks good. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna duplicate and then I can also change this or leave it, but the product will change, okay? Uh, and then we can also leave this. Now we're gonna go back here, click on settings, make sure it's correct there. And now we're gonna select a second product. So let's say it's a hat and then perfect. So now you have those two things. The other option we're gonna do here is expand here, right? And again, when you open yours, should look blank or should have something there, just delete it and just keep it blank right there. And we're gonna go back to state one. And then this, this state, we're gonna rename it. So I'm gonna copy the code uh, that I already have here that you'll also be able to have access to. And the reason why you wanna copy and paste uh, right now before you start doing anything is because it's also gonna give you a guide of what's going on. So as you can see here on the code, it has the name upsell one as the name of the, uh, <clears throat> of the box. And then the state is first offer and then the second state is gonna be second offer. So we're gonna change those things. So you have two options here. You can either uh, change the name on your items or change the code and just replace those with your IDs. So again, it's optional here. You decide what works best for you and then just go for it. So 
once here, we're going to go into state one and we're going to change it to first offer. And this is capital sensitive or case sensitive, sorry. Uh, so make sure that if it's lowercase or capital case, you got to be exactly because if not, you're going to have errors and it's not going to work. So we have the first state and then the second state, we're going to change it to state ID here and make sure you put it on the state. Okay. Not the, uh, the one on the top, because if not, it's not going to work. It happened to me before. Um, sometimes I get distracted. So second offer and then boom. As you can see, as we're updating the code, I mean the items or the IDs, the code uh, errors start going away. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go back to first offer. And then this text right here, we're gonna change it to uh, close. And then we're gonna name it BTN1. And it's like that. And then it already fixed one of the errors. And now we're gonna go to the second one and we're gonna change that button also or text that we're using as a button and we're gonna change it to uh, close BTN2. And as you can see, uh, if, it's not, if it's not changing, that means you did it you did it wrong but sometimes if you still see the error just click on the code and it should disappear so as you can see it's this one right here and then now we have lastly to change the app cell one which is going to be the multi-state box right now the, the id is state box eight but it has to be changed to app cell one and then you see perfect so now it removed all the errors. And then what else we're gonna have to do right now is, let me see, we're missing anything. So we change all the IDs. Uh, as you can see here it, uh, on the code, it mentions on ready, right? The upsell one, which is the box, will change the state offer to the first offer. And then uh, it's gonna send a t uh, set a timer out right to expand and then it's gonna just keep showing the second offer then we also have here the text that we have it as buttons to close so we have to add a handler so that way when they click on it if they don't want the offer then it's gonna close the box so we're just gonna add on click and sometimes when you add the handler it might have a one so if that's the case just delete the under dash one. It has to be exactly like how it's in here on the code. So you don't want to have uh, the number one under. So if we go here where it says close BTN on click, as you can see, it has to be just that and not, not a number one or anything. So you can see here on click. So that's good. We'll add it. And it's going to add this line right here. So we got to delete that. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the second uh, box, which is gonna be the first offer, and we're gonna do the same thing for this one, and we're gonna do on click, and then we're gonna select, and now it added it. Perfect. I think we're almost done right there. Um, let's see. Uh, expand. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we click the box. We're gonna click collapse. And what it's going to do is going to be set uh, for three seconds. So we have it at three seconds so you can expand it. And then we have to rotate the offers. Uh, so it's going to change every five seconds. Uh, then we also have another handler here, which is called on um, this one right here, which is the buttons. And then the upsell one. I think that's all we need here. Yep. So that's it. So you can add other handlers too if you have other buttons to close or activate button. Um, and then just go for it. So let's go and test this out. So as we land here, 
Uh, okay, let's actually take a look on the public. We're going to publish it because sometimes this thing might be not as accurate on the editor. So we're going to go to the shop. And then there's no product right now. So we're going to add this one. And then once we go here, uh, <clears throat> we should be able to see the checkout. And boom, we have the first one-time offer. And if you wait a few seconds, because we have a set to five, it changes to the second one. So it's going to keep changing back and forth until the, the user makes a decision. So if they add it to the cart, it will close. But if they don't want it, they can just click here and it closes the box completely so they can just continue. So that's how you can do this uh, step of having two different products and be, be as creative as you want. And you can change also the, um, the times. So you don't have to use the same ones that I have here. So if we go back here, you can modify the code. So you don't have to exactly keep it the same. If you want to do more seconds, just change this for four. And if you want this to be less seconds, then change it to four or three. Uh, but as you can see, that's how it's going to be. So I'll refresh it and it's going to show again. Um, <clears throat> so that way you can see what it looks like. So we have it there. If I pick the, the hat, I can just click on it. And now he added it and he closed the box so they can complete the checkout. So again, hopefully this video helped you. Uh, on the third video I'm going to upload is going to be about a timer. So if the user is not making a decision. Uh, we're going to have a timer. And once it reaches zero, it's going to completely close the box. So thank you again for the follow. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you have questions, comment. And see you in the next one.